business has had various challenges for women. Despite this, women walked the journey meticulously towards a new constitutional dispensation. They formed various groups such as Women Political Caucus, Maendeleo Ya Wanawake, Federation of Women Lawyers, and League of Kenyan Women Voters, among many others, to mobilize women and women organizations in the process of constitution making. Women stopped apologizing as groups, organizations, and individuals for taking power, but instead came together to negotiate for constitutional and policy change. In this series, we focus on Dr. Nancy Barraza, Dr. Aida Odinga, and Kamla Sikand, who mobilize women and women organizations during the constitution making process. Let's listen to Dr. Nancy Barraza, a Kenyan former judge, the first Deputy Chief Justice of Kenya, and a member of Kenya's first Supreme Court after the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution. She served in the courtroom from June 2011 to her suspension in January 2012 and subsequent resignation on the 18th of October 2012. She was appointed to the Kenya Law Reform Commission in 2008 for a term of three years, serving as vice chairperson to her appointment as Deputy Chief Justice. In 2010, she was elected chairperson of the Media Council of Kenya's Ethics and Complaints Commission. She gives insight on how FIDA was influential in spearheading constitutional reforms. FIDA has been very, very influential in the whole area of, of legal and constitutional reforms with women in mind. And, uh, Legislation, if you talk now of the recent uh, marriage law, the recent domestic violence law, the recent matrimonial property law, uh, all those are, um, have been the result of initiatives from, from the movement lawyers and uh, the federation in particular. In constitution making, first and foremost, to influence the greater democratic movement but specifically to ensure that uh, women issues which have been lacking in the old constitution are also taken in on board. And so in the 90s we got very busy, we got into that struggle. And, and so that's how I got in there. Uh, as chair of FIDA at some stage, I, I was on the front of Namano process under the People's Commission uh, that had been formed in 1998 to count uh, the government move to form a commission that would undertake constitutional reforms at that time. And people didn't trust the government at all. They did not trust the government. They didn't think the government which had oppressed them for that law is the same government which can give them uh, a, 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 an equitable, um, a, a people's constitution. So the opposition, the civil society, the religious people uh, opposed that unilateral move on the part of the government, which had formed its own um, constitution, uh, parliamentary um, committee to oversee constitution making, it was chaired by the Honorable Aida Odinga. To add to that, Dr. Aida Odinga, a Kenyan educator, businesswoman and activist, shows how the League of Kenyan Women Voters worked closely with other women organizations such as FIDA by identifying and training women to conduct interviews on issues to be drafted in the new constitution during the constitution making process at Bombers. She recounts. I moved say, to start the League of Kenya Women Voters and I devoted my time 
into the league to establish that organization. Hey, women started coming. Then we opened the membership. And actually, we had a lot of people, many women joined us. And you know, that is the time when I told you that Mendeleo became Kanu Mendeleo. So those of us, those women who are in your position, could not join Mendeleo or could not feel like they are part of Mendeleo. Because when the Lord become Kanu, if you are not supporting Kanu, how do you become that? You go to the League of Kenya Women Voters. Most of the women who became MPs actually came from the, that membership, right? That League of Women Voters. Of course, we also worked very closely with other women organizations like National Council of Women of Kenya. Right? I wanted to ask you about that. Like FIDA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Political like, focus. <coughs> Political, political caucus started after us. Also. Mm. Yeah. During those days of um, of the constitution making at the mm -hmm. of Kenya, we used our organization to identify the women mm -hmm. uh, who could go and participate. Uh, we used to uh, identify and train women mm -hmm. on uh, interviews, to go and carry out the interviews, so that we know these are the issues. We met as, as a group, as women ourselves, in our organization, and we, um, we wrote down issues that we wanted to be included in the Constitution, mm -hmm. and then we sent representatives to go and represent us in the Constitution making. It was a very dangerous undertaking, but we were there because uh, we thought we were uh, standing in for the people of Kenya, so it even moved a lot of stuff. But eventually, in uh, 2001, the two parallel processes were, were, were merged after the effort of the then chairman of CKRC, uh, Professor P. H. Wankan, uh, who saw that uh, running two parallel uh, constitution making processes was a danger in the country. So he engaged the Fungaman Initiative, the religious people, the opposition, the civil society. And a merger was broken between the two. And so the People's Commission of Fungaman was merged with the Parliamentary Commission. And uh, the CKRC was, was born. And uh, I, I served on that commission as as a commission. Uh, and that is the commission that uh, produced the constitutional draft 2002, which was eventually debated at, at the National Constitution Conference called the Bombers. And uh, it, it produced um, the Bombers draft. But, um, which was a very negotiated document. But the political intrigues led to the alteration of that Bomber's draft. And what came out of it was the so called Waco draft, which was subjected to a referendum in 2005, and it was rejected because people thought uh, that their views about the kind of constitution contained in the former draft had been tempered. Despite the rejection of the Waco draft and the aftermath of the 2007 post-election violence, the never gave up but sought initiatives to revive the constitution-making process. In 2008, I think so, the Constitution of Kenya Review Act, uh, within which framework we had uh, operated, was uh, amended, I think so, and uh, the Committee of Experts was, was appointed. And the duty of the Committee of Experts was to look at the contentious issues. What, what had become contentious at Bomas, uh, 
uh, not the entire document, but there were contentious issues which had to do, I think, with the position of the Catholic courts. It had to do with devolution. It had to do with the with the, the system of government. I think whether we wanted a parliamentary system or or, or or presidential system, those were sticking issues. And so the COE was to resolve those sticking issues, but basically using the Bomber's uh, draft, the Wako draft, uh, to come up with a harmonized draft. And that is what they did. And uh, so we got the new constitution in 2010. The efforts of the women organizations and women leaders indeed bore fruits, as the late Kamla Sikand says. Kenya produced a great constitution. It's a, uh, if you look at it and if you have the time to study each and every chapter even now, you do realize uh, uh, that it's a beautiful constitution, very, very good for the country. You know? uh, so, especially for the women also. Mm. The constitution making process was long, frustrating and tedious for women and women organizations. But the enactment of the 2010 constitution brought celebration. As we continue the journey, we need to reflect and tell those who are new in the journey that even those who have exited from this world still continue to water the seeds of that freedom. As we harvest, we must also pour some of that drink to celebrate those who have gone before us, those who have planted, cultivated, and nurtured the crops and are not here to harvest the fruits of their hard work, their constitution.